with you. The Holy Gospel of Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. On the first day of the week, at very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like the lightning stood, stood beside lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, "Why do you look for the living upon the dead? He's not here. He had he has risen. Remember how she how he told you." While he was still with you in the Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified on the third day, be raised again. Then they remembered the words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all the sins to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of the James. And the others with them who told this to the the apostles, but they did not believe the women, because their words seemed seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb, bending over, he saw the strips of the linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So, did you hear what what just、uh, what was just read? 
the account of the Jesus resurrection, and did you hear the reaction of the closest to Jesus? Let's read it again, Luke twenty four eleven. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Nonsense. But here we are, come to celebrate the greatest event in the history of the world. Here we are, come together, rehear the greatest story ever told. The death has been defeated. The sin holds no power to destroy us, and the kingdom awaits us. And there can be a new life. We hear that. Those closest to Jesus during three years of his ministry, those who heard him preach on the hillside and beside him, beside the water, and those who had shared in miracles, those who had broken bread with him, and only friends can can in the intimacy of the upper room, and those had heard him teaching with patience about the kingdom of God. Now we hear, when they heard the amazing story of empty tomb, and they thought it was nonsense. I always had this image of early disciples, the true followers of Jesus. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry. If they hadn't shared that what they saw and heard, we wouldn't have this church today. The story of Jesus. And to tell more people from generation to generation, but here they are, these people of faith, these whom Jesus told about the new kingdom and he was establishing, and these whom Jesus tried to tell about the, what would happen after three days, they thought it was an idle tale, it was nonsense to them. So here's the question: Is it real, the resurrection? People going to death and resurrect, and being alive again. So let's start. Let's find out by starting、uh, with a little story. Over a thousand years ago, a Spanish kingdom was under attack by foreign invaders. For many years, one small fort with a steward. We stood all our thoughts. Thanks to a remarkable leader, it's called the EI Seat. When their great leader died, his followers、uh, had an idea. They dressed his body in his armor, and tied a sword in his hand, and placed his corpse on the horse. When EI Seat body in the in the lead, the Spanish forces charged. But they were quickly defeated, for the act of food no one, a desperate trick, that collapsed the lead to despair instead of victory. This will always be be those who insist that this was the strat strategy of early churches. A dead leader, dressed in armor, puffed up on a horse with a sword hand, tell people. The chief priest said to the soldiers following the Jesus resurrection, "That his disciples came while you were asleep, and stole his body. That way, if the story of his disappearance reaches the governor's ears, you won't get in trouble." This is being re- recorded in the Matthew in the Gospel. Turns from very beginning. The explanation was advanced that the disciples had stolen Christ's body in order to invent the story of his resurrection. A dead body dressed in armor, sword in hand, mounted mounted on a horse. So never had a, a less satisfactory solution been proposed to a difficult problem. The reason this explanation was not persuasive then is the same reason it not persuasive now. 
It simply does not fit the facts. Let's consider some of the facts concerning Jesus' resurrection. Let's see what happened at that time. In the first place, let's consider the genuineness of his, of his friend's grief. Never had there been a more demoralized group of believers than the tiny band of the followers after Jesus' crucifixion. Only the women were brave enough to mourn him in public. The men were all in hiding, fearful that the Roman soldiers would next come for them. They were obviously stunned by the sudden turn of the events. In one week's time, they had seen their leaders go from the being cheered on his entrance into Jerusalem and to being crucified between two to thieves. And in the Luke 24, verse 21, it marked, We hoped he was the one who redeemed Israel, but now he was dead and so were their dreams. We can understand that, and we too have difficulty accept, accepting the death of a loved one. We can appreciate the feeling of a little girl, little girl who wrote a letter to God. It went like this. Dear God, instead of letting people die and having to make new ones, why don't you just keep ones you've got now? We wish God did work like that, but he doesn't. The undertakers of this world all signed their letters, eventually yours. We don't deal with the fact of death very well, do we? We don't deal with the fact of death, and neither did the, those early disciples. They were uh, disappointed discouraged, defeated a lot on the first Easter morning, it would be difficult to imagine, imagine them mounting any kind of a crusade at the point of their lives, much less turning the world upside down and spread good news when they saw all those things. Their grief was so genuine and almost debilitating so think about the real and the grief there. And just as genuine as their surprise, their surprise at the at the strange strange tale the woman the woman told. We know the story by heart. Some of the women had gone to the tomb to prepare the body with the spices and the ointments. Reaching the tomb, however, they found the stone rolled away where they were trying to sift, their, sift this through their minds. Two, two men dressed in dazzling apparel appeared to them. The women were terrified and bowed, bowed their faces to the ground. The man asked the most startling question in all history, why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told, told us. And while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered to the hands of the sinful man and be crucified and on the third day rise. The woman remembered that Christ had spoken those exact words and they rushed back, rushed to the, where the man was hiding and broke to them the most wonderful headling of the time. He is risen. And how did the disciples react? Luke tells us, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. That was a big surprise, which was too big to accept. But the feeling, but the, the feeling of surprise was there, is so genuine, right? We are confronted with the genuineness of the disciples' grief 
and the genuineness of their surprise at the idle tale of the women even more impressive. However, was the genuineness of the change that Christ, Christ's resurrection made in their lives. From the defeated to dynamic, from the hard, hard sick to heroic, from the doubting to death defying, the radical change took place in the lives, lives of those who follow Jesus. Is not kind of change one feel among the persons who are perpetrating a fraud. One does not die defending a fairy tale. The disciples were witness an event and divides all the human history into before and after. And just Jesus' resurrection human beings before and after. So Jesus had risen from the dead. There has been much interest of late in the subject of life after death. Researchers have found the reports of persons who have been revived following the, following the near-death experience tell amazingly similar tales about the bright light and about such things as out-of-body episodes. Are there reports to be believed? G.P. Phillips is universally as esteemed from his translation for the New Testament in the modern English and for his books named it Your God is too small. And Philip's vows and declares that a few days following the death of a great writer C.S. Lewis, a few years back, and Lewis appeared to Philip's sitting in the chair only a few feet away. He testifies that Lewis spoke a few words of particularly relevance of a difficult situation through which Philip was passing. What shall we make this? Either Philip is a liar, or particularly no one will accept that, and he was uh, hallucinating, or Louis was alive after his death. Those are only three possibilities. You may take your pick. I do not believe that G.P. Phillips, however, would have been willing to have to be thrown into the gladius ring to support his contention, and he really had seen Louis. The disciples, however, were willing to give up everything they had, including their lives, in defense of the con contention that Christ was alive. Why? From listening a nonsense idol story, become they want to devote everything, even life, to prove Jesus is alive, and to send the news to from generation to generation. Because they now knew, without doubt, the death no longer had dominion over them. Christ was alive, and they devoted the rest of their lives spread the good news. So this special morning, the Easter, my friends are sitting here, and brothers, sisters, that is our task to spread the good news and tell people Jesus is still alive with us. In one of the writings, a priest wrote down those startling words. There are no proofs or existence of God. There are only witnesses. So he's right. I cannot open a text and prove, prove to you scientifically that God exists. I can only testify to my own experience and the experience of the others. My own experience is that Christ is alive because I have experience with him in my own lives. 
And I believe you have your story and Jesus and walking with you together in your home, in your life. And today's story was the testimony of the early church, the early church. But, but their story were more credible, more dramatic. Why? Because their experience of him was, was so dramatic. They had known him before his crucifixion. They had encountered him after his resurrection. No wonder they turned the world upside down and from generation to generation and so many Christians. And then that's why we have this beautiful church and we have this faith and then have Jesus sitting with us. So the words run with the authenticity and their words and the past from the biblical words and until today. The testimony of a woman had not been an idle tale, but had been the eternal truth. The best evidence of the truth was the changed lives that occurred in those who knew him and then those who know him now. With the greetings of a happy Easter, and let me ask you these questions at the end of this preaching. Do you know Jesus now? Is the good news of Easter still idle tale to you? Is it still nonsense or some sense of that? Or are you among those who have encountered him in their own lives and who proclaim today, he is risen, he is alive? So I do hope went through this story and think about the disciples from the nonsense and think about the genuine of grief, genuine surprise, and their genuine of act to spread the good news. And the happy Easter, and let us pray and the Lord be with us and in this holy day. Amen.
Apostles' Creed. Please stand if able. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the saints. The resurrection of body and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of people. That our Lord is risen, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and living resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for us who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. that by his power, wars and famine may cease throughout all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection let us pray to the Lord. In our family cycle of prayer, let us pray for Sherland and Joan Henderson, Louise and William Holliday, Joan and Richard Jameson, Nancy and Har Brach, Jameson, Nora Knox, Joyce Kai, Mercy Kai, and their families. I would also like us to say a prayer, a special prayer this week, for Joy's husband, Jersey. Let's pray for a successful surgery and a speedy recovery. In the Diocese of Niagara, St. Michael's Hamilton, the Reverend John Forbes, Rector, the Reverend Canon Frederick Roberts, Honorary Assistant, and all the people of that parish. 
Let us take a moment to say the names of those we know to be in need, or allow those things that are weighing heavy on our hearts this day to come before the Lord. So we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Amen. That camera a little bit frozen. We have another one. <laughs> now we have an Easter Eucharist. Our offering hymn today is the One Bread, One Body. i 
Let us pray. God of life, bring us to the glory of the resurrection promised in the Easter sacrament. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Please stand for the glory to God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. And blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for some announcement. Our church will. Keep going, and、uh, Wednesday morning we have a morning prayer. Right now it is online, and welcome join us. It's a twenty minutes reading scriptures and forty minutes free reflection, and no pressure, just follow the spirit.、Yeah. And、uh, every Sunday, welcome join the church, and、uh, I think we have more more kids, and the church will be keep open. I think、uh, that's what Bishop says.、Uh, she won't keep close it again. So, but we still need to wear masks and uh, to keep the social distance. What I heard is the the, the new wave of the it's getting stable. Hopefully, it's、uh, like the Passover. We pass over this wave. <laughs>、uh, I think we have some other announcement. Dean, do you want to hear it? So thanks everyone for your gift card sales. The promotion ends today.、Uh, Roy will be taking the store off of、uh, our website tomorrow morning. So please do place your orders、uh, if you do、uh, want to、um, purchase some gift cards. For those that may not be familiar, you do get 100% of the value of the gift card, and the church does get a certain percentage of the gift card. And most of the gift cards are things we purchase every week, such as groceries and gas. So your help is very much appreciated. And we hope to have them back here for distribution、uh, on Mother's Day. That's the goal. Honey, do you want to talk about the flower sale? Okay, I'll talk about the flower sale. So、uh, the flower sale starts today. So it's already on the website. Roy and team have done a great job. Lots and lots of flowers and vegetables to choose from. We've promoted it on the、uh, on the billboard sign、uh, by the road. There are hard copy order forms. Out in the sanctuary right here, as well as the community center, to help promote it with posters. And then we're looking for lots and lots of volunteers. So our goal is to have the.、Uh, we haven't finalized this with the nursery, but our goal is to have the flowers arrive here, the Friday before the long weekend, for distribution on the Saturday of the long weekend. That's the goal. So we need lots of volunteers that Friday afternoon-ish to unload the truck. As well as Saturday pickup will be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. No delivery this year, so we need lots of volunteers for the Friday drop off of the truck, and then Saturday distribution to customers as they come. So, great, great way for all of your、uh, teenage, high school students to get their community volunteer hours.、Uh, Gemma has promised to sign all the acknowledgement forms that she needs to sign to make that happen. So, thanks, Gemma, for doing that in advance. More news to come. We'll finalize everything. Look for full details on the bulletin, but that's the plan right now. Thanks. So just a couple of things. That was another thing I volunteered for that I wasn't aware of. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice when people keep me informed of the things I volunteered for.、Um, the other thing I wanted to thank our amazing AV team. Like every week, you guys are here. We really, really appreciate it. 
whatever whatever challenges we see, cameras going down, they pop something else up, and that thing sticks, and they get it going again. So thank you so much. We don't take it for granted. We really appreciate it. And I just want to say welcome back, everybody. It's lovely to see so many people back again. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you to all of you. We just had a very successful community concert last week. I'm hoping in the next couple of months we will have more. So it's, uh, please invite your friends and uh, I will make phone calls. And you can make all the phone calls or invite people to come back to church. And the church is still the harbor of the community, still the face of center. And uh, like I mentioned many times, trust God, trust the Holy Spirit, trust Jesus. The Spirit is still with us and from the church community, into our home and into our life. We will have the directly life with God and have going to the kingdom of heaven someday. So any other announcement? So if we don't, it's a happy Easter again. And our recession hymn is a rejoice the Lord is King. <laughs>